What is the best tier 1 weapon in Grounded? This is a question we've all wondered when playing the early game in Grounded. Today I will answer that question for you. But first, I must explain how I tested these weapons. If this video gets 100 likes, I'll do this again, but with all of the tier 2 weapons in the game. In order to see which weapon is best, I took all 6 tier 1 weapons. There were things like the acorn shovel and the canteen that I didn't test in this video. The reason for this, because one of the primary purposes of these items is not to be used as a weapon. Neither of these items have a mutation that boosts their damage either. I also excluded the fists, as while they have a mutation to boost their damage, they are typically only good when combined with specific mutations. I took the 6 weapons on the screen and killed 38 enemies using them. I killed all neutral and aggressive enemies, excluding the diving bell spider and water flea, as these are underwater, meaning certain weapons are unable to kill them. I also excluded the passive creatures, as they have no weaknesses nor resistances. It is important to note I didn't use any mutations or buffs during this, nor did I upgrade the weapons. I also had the creatures ignoring me for most of the fights. I will however mention which weapons can be improved using certain mutations and buffs. I also didn't fully kill all enemies like the Broodmother, as it would have taken too long so I used the weapons to take the enemies down to a specific amount of health instead. Before we get to the data, I want to display my predictions on the screen. I made these predictions after recording the footage, but before finding out the total time for each weapon. As you can see, I put the spiky sprig in first, as it just felt extremely strong. I put the lava blade in second, the pebble axe in third, the pebble hammer in fourth, the pebble spear in fifth, and finally the pebble dagger in last. I would also like to display this chart on the screen, courtesy of Mediocre Milton, that shows the scoring system for each weapon type in the game. According to this chart, the chopping damage type weapons, like the axe, should be the worst, and the generic weapons, like the spiky sprig, should be the best, as no enemies are weak nor resistant to them. So, if we base it off of this chart, the ordering of the weapons should go spiky sprig, pebble hammer, pebble spear, Lava Blade, Peblet Dagger, and finally the Peblet Axe. But this chart fails to take into account the attack speed of the weapons as well as many other factors. After killing all 38 enemies, I took the clips and cut them down to get a final time for killing all enemies. For each enemy, the timer starts on the exact frame before the first attack hits, as seen by the health bar. The timer then ends on the first frame that the health bar can be seen as empty. In 6th place, we sadly have the Peblet Dagger, with a time of 18 minutes and 52 seconds. Now I'm a sucker for the daggers in the game, but I knew before even recording that this would end up in last place. This is primarily because it is designed as an underwater weapon, so naturally it does less damage to creatures on land. I would say, however, that this would be good if paired with the Assassin mutation, as this gives enemies a bleed effect that causes damage over time, similar to the poison effect in the game. However, the bleed effect works on spiders unlike the poison effect. This weapon can also be improved with tier 2 of Coupe de Gras and a meal like a spider slider to increase your crit chance, as this both increases the damage you deal and it stuns the enemy every time you hit a crit. Since this weapon has such a high swing speed, it can be lethal when combined with a high crit chance, as it essentially stops your enemy from hitting you. Overall, this is the worst weapon by quite a large margin, but when paired with the right mutations and meals, it can still be useful, and what it lacks in its ability to kill creatures on land, it makes up for in its ability to kill underwater. In 5th place, we surprisingly have the Peblet Axe, with a time of 17 minutes and 37 seconds. While using this weapon, it didn't feel particularly weak, but clearly the overall time shows that it was. This time does make sense as it does rank bottom on the weakness chart with a score of negative 19, meaning there are 19 more enemies that are resistant to the axe than are weak to the axe. Another reason this surprised me is because I see a lot of people choosing to use the axe early on in the game, so I just assumed that it would be stronger. Like most weapons, the axe can be buffed if you have the chopper mutation, as this will interrupt enemy attacks. Thus, when paired with Coupe de Gras, which also stuns enemies, 
it would prevent enemies from attacking a lot of the time, despite the low damage that it deals. The axe also has a score of 1.5 on its stun, which also increases the chance of stunning enemies, buying you even more time to deal damage. In fourth place, with a time of 17 minutes and 5 seconds, we have the Pebble Hammer. I have to say, I expected this to be low, as its attack speed is very slow. Usually, when playing the game, normally, I can't even get a full 3-hit combo in, as I will have to block the enemy's attack first. It only comes in 30 seconds faster than the axe, despite being the second highest on the weakness chart that we displayed earlier. While using the hammer, it felt powerful in most situations, and I rarely ran out of stamina, but the defining factor here was the speed, as well as the first hit of each combo dealing virtually no damage. It's important to note that the Pebbler Hammer does have a stun value of 3, making it have the joint highest stun value of any weapon tested. You can also pair this weapon with the Smasher Mutation, which has a chance to daze enemies, which reduces their attack speed. Overall, I wouldn't recommend the hammer, due to its slow speed, and the fact that it is very hard to pull off a full 3 attack combo. Before we get to the top 3, it is important to note that all of the entries in the top 3 have no purpose in the game other than to be used as a weapon. Whereas the three prior weapons we have shown have all had uses as a tool within the game. In third place, with a time of 16 minutes and 43 seconds, slightly faster than the Peblet Hammer, we have the Peblet Spear. Seeing that the Peblet Spear finished in third shocked me, I'll be honest. After using this weapon, I predicted it to finish in fifth place, as it just felt extremely weak. If we look at the weakness chart, we can see that the Peblet Spear ranks third among damage types, yet it still managed to beat the Peblet Hammer that ranked second on the chart. This is likely down to the speed that the spear hits at. You can also buff this weapon by equipping the Javelinier mutation, which makes it so the spear has a chance to reduce the enemy's defense. I don't know if this mutation stacks, but if it does, with how fast this weapon attacks, it could make for a lethal combo against any enemy. Overall, I didn't think I'd say this, but the Pebbler Spear is actually really good. In second place, with a time of 13 minutes and 53 seconds, a whole 3 minutes faster than the Pebbler Spear in third place, we have the Lava Blade. I predicted this weapon to finish second, and it did. It was an easy prediction to make, as you can see, it was 3 minutes faster than all of the previous weapons, and there was a noticeable difference when using it. It's important to note that this weapon is only ranked 4th on the prediction based on the weakness chart. The weapon is a slashing damage type, but it also inflicts a small amount of poison to enemies once hit. Spiders and the robots are immune to this poison, but it does affect all other enemies in the game. If you're a big fan of one-handed weapons, this is the highest ranking on the list, meaning you can use this with a shield. You can also use the Blade Master mutation, which reduces the stamina cost of the next combo of attacks, allowing your stamina bar to last longer in fights, buying you enough time to get the final blow you need to kill your enemy. Overall, I really recommend using this weapon due to its fast attacks, poison effect, and the ability to use a shield while wielding it. Finally, in first place, with an overall time of 11 minutes and 13 seconds, making it almost two minutes faster than second place alone, it's the Spiky Sprig. All I have to say about this weapon is wow. I predicted it to finish first after using it, but I'd never used it in previous playthroughs. The weakness chart predicted it to finish first, due to the fact that it deals generic damage, which means no enemies are weak nor resistant to the damage it deals. It is worth noting that the weapon is two-handed, so you cannot use a shield with it, but honestly, you don't need one. Your enemy will be dead before you even need to block an attack. Prior to making this video, I had no idea this weapon was this good. But now, my eyes have been opened, and I can see the light. This weapon also has a stun value of 3, which is the joint highest on the list, meaning it will stun enemies the most frequently. The one drawback with this weapon is that the mutation you unlock, Barbarian, isn't great in my opinion. It gives you the chance to enter a rage mode which increases your attack, but desynchronizes your perfect block timing, making it much harder to perfect block. I wouldn't recommend you use the Barbarian Mutation unless you are used to it. Overall, this weapon is simply amazing, and I couldn't recommend that you use it anymore. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I would appreciate if you hit the like button. 
as I mentioned earlier, 100 likes, and I'll do this again with all of the Tier 2 weapons in the game. Subscribe for more Grounded content, and I'll see you next time. Have a great day.